Neoclassic trees like nymphs crouch and reach the sky at water's edge and alternate their reach in the dark amorphous masses, pulling our eyes through them to the mysterious distance. Details are suppressed and surpassed as our eyes cross bridges of putty, paint, and stone. A liquid path floats reflection of a sky that fades to a buttery cream and white. A distillation's waterway held fast on sight. Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot, born in 1796, anticipated the plein air innovations of the Impressionists, filling notebooks with fluid strokes and open air studies that melted memory with mood. A trail of thin, reflected light beckons us backward through an impossibly verdant marsh, winding like a snake through the heavy sod and skies that are poised to erupt in richly hued rain. Martin Johnson Heed, 1819, redefined the romanticist notions of his Hudson River contemporaries and rendered the American marsh both a worthy subject matter for conservationist contemplation and an evocative suspense. He built the wetlands into a new visual voice of national merit. A distant direction's torch softly illuminates dark chocolate coastline, forming as a foil for boats as they become central characters in a play of ocean tides, built as mirrors for skies that glow Gloucester pink from stem to stern. Fitz Henry Lane, born on the periphery of Gloucester, Massachusetts' working waterfront in 1804 and crippled by a daunting paralysis into only halted motion, captivated our eyes with an ascending shipmast and climbing light. 